Okay, we've already talked about the buttons on the screen. We talked about the press and go. That's how you enter the cook mode. The menus we've talked about. That's where, again, all the menus are, all the recipes. And let's talk about diagnostics. Under diagnostics, we have the revision. If I already hit start, okay, it's going to give you a manufacturing date. It's going to give you your install date as long as you, somebody put it in there. If I click on that, nothing's going to happen. But I'll show you where to put that stuff in. Serial number, serial number of the unit. Again, that's just a sequential number. It's not really the serial number. UI hardware is not reported. Okay, the version. Okay, that's the version. Software, again, there's your software. 4.0.451, controller version. All this information is in here. We may ask you for some of this information uh, on a service call. So we'll go back. And now under diagnostics log, stores the last 99 error codes or diagnostic log. As long as your time is set up in the controller, like we went under diagnostics, I'll show you how to do that. As long as the time is correct and the date's correct, it's gonna give you the time date, time stamp and date that you actually had the error message. E30 or alarm 30 or error 30 is what happened. CJ121 Fahrenheit and then it has the uh, reference switches your encoder counts. We're concerned about this right here, the alarm. So you better go back through the error histories, find out exactly what alarms happened when. E42, 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 E1. Or to scroll down a little bit more. Again, the highlighted one is the one you're looking at when you're scrolling down. So again, E10R, E12, E41. E41A, E41B, and E41C, they are all high power situations, uh, low power. So you don't have, this unit is set up for 208 volt. If it might not be reading 208 volt, it might be reading 145 volts on one of the legs. So that's what the diagnostic log is. Click back out, go backwards. Status, okay, click on status. And this is where you're gonna find out. Description of the grill, customer, Okay, grill type, timestamp, AC power line frequencies. It automatically selects the frequency. So here you can see run a 60 hertz cycle. Okay, if you're in the UK, it would be 50 hertz. And here's also where you can tell you what voltages are coming into the unit. We have 213, 214, 212. Okay, there are the actual voltages that are coming into this unit at this present moment as we speak. Measure your outlet to make sure that that's saying the same thing. Okay, SIB, supply input voltage, 23.55. Now again, on the AC power conversion board, I can adjust that to get a full 24 volts right there if I wanted to. If I'm watching it, we're going 23.55 uh, down to 23.52 and back. I can just do it on my power conversion board. There's a little potentiometer to adjust. Again, SIB 12 volt rail, 12.34 volts. Again, it just gives you what's going on throughout the unit on the voltages. And this is the master, okay? Power group, again, 24 cycles, homing required. And you go down through a lot of this in information here. Yeah, it even gives you the temperatures that it's reading at this present moment. Okay, temperature six and seven and eight are not used, so that's why they're not available. Okay, this controller has the option to have uh, a different model that we could put a fan in. However, this particular model does not. And there's your thermocouple readings. Again, six, seven, and eight, there are no thermocouples. And you can see it's open thermocouple, nothing attached. And you have an offset of five. 
and then a cold junction temperature. All right, so that's giving you the temperature at the tip of that thermocouple. All right, that was under revisions. Let's see, that was under diagnostic status statistics. Let's go to statistics. Statistics versions 1.3, total cook cycles. It tells me how many total cook cycles were completed. Cook cycles since cleaning. So it gives you how many cleaning, how many cook cycles since the last clean. Last clean was uh, November 18, 2019 at 2100 hours. So I can tell you the last time. So that hasn't been cleaned in over two years. Total services. Okay, it'll give you some uh, information on total services. And that's based on when you replace a component, if you upload the status. If you turn it down, unplug it, it's not gonna give you the, any uh, information, but you have to upload the, the new status and change the status of the counts of the, uh, in particular, component replacement. Okay, how many partial cook cycles? How many times have we abandoned it by hitting the green cancel button or the cancel button on the controller? Total platen cycles, 416. So that counts every cycle that goes up and down. Okay. Then the last service call was uh, the 12th, 12, 12 11, 2019. Okay. Head back. And that was under statistics. Let's go to platen calibration statistics. A lot of this is just some information uh, that the UI and the SIB and the encoder captures throughout. Not much we're gonna do in here, you're not gonna change anything. But there might be a time where we ask you, let me know what the platen level max limit is and platen level minimum limit is. And you just go in here and you read it and there you go. I'm gonna go back. Actually, I, I missed some at the bottom here. If you press and hold, you can go all the way down to the bottom. <clears throat> zero home reference switch default uh, values, zero delta back to front. Again, you're not gonna have this because there is no rear sensor or front sensor on the Wendy's units. On sister grills that actually have a proximity sensor, this will come into play, you'll see that. Again, we did all these, let's go down. And a sound test, I'll bring it all the way up so we can go down. Okay, there we go. Sound test would be the next one. Sound test is pretty neat. So you can turn around and go in and you hit play sound. And right now it's at 70. If I were to turn up, press and hold, you can hear the audible sound change. We'll put it back down to 70. Stop sound. Hit the back arrow. And if you hit the home switch, the home icon, it'll just take you right out of the, out of the uh, diagnostic section or whatever section you're in. And it'll take you back to the off screen. So again, we were all the way down. Go ahead and press that. Advanced, if I hit start. Please log in to continue. So log in. Hit return. And at that point, this is where you're going to turn around and do some diagnostic testing and also update component life tracking. On one of our sister customers, they want life tracking updated. So when you replace a component, you would go into this area and hit start. And then here's a list of components that actually are required to be updated when you change. Okay, power supply, that's your DC, AC, DC power supply board. So details, it says current count 524 hours on that particular piece of equipment or that part. If I wanna reset it, if I replace it, I hit reset and at that point the hours start climbing up again. Okay, it's important that we do that. This way if there's ever a question out in the field uh, from the factory, how many times has this actuator been replaced or when was the last time uh, the power supply was replaced, for example. If it says zero hours, 
That means it was just replaced. If it says 10 hours, it was 10 hours ago. 10 working hours, I should say. Again, these are just, I'm going to go all the way up. And I'm just going to scroll down so you can see what's in there. So again, if you replace uh, anything on here, always get the details first. For example, let's say uh, actuator assembly, get the details first. And current count, 416 platen cycles. Uh, replace actuator motor on 416 platen cycles. Reset. Okay, make sure you put that in your paperwork. It helps us out diagnosing uh, warranty claims, etc. We're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, go back to here. Uh, motion diagnostics. Okay, it says before starting diagnostic, ensure that there are no objects in the flattened path. Start motion. Press it. it. Says motion diagnostic testing in progress. Please stay clear of platen while test is in progress. Okay, so now the platen's moving down. Moving back up again. And it's going all the way down, now it's coming back down again at a different speed. Now it's coming back up. And let me go ahead and see if I can get that on video. I got the lights off so you can see. And what it's actually doing, it's going up and down and it's hitting the upper home switch and the lower home switch and it's taking the information of gathering the information. And if I were to look on my progress bar, as you can see here, it's advancing. So if that gets all the way blue, that means it's done. I'm gonna cancel, I'm not gonna go, I'm gonna wait till it goes, cancel right here. And at that point, it's been canceled and I can go back. Now the same thing on my temperature diagnostics, I can click on that, make sure the grill surfaces are clean before starting the temperature diagnosis, because what's gonna happen, it's going to heat up, all right? Baseline, if I were to click on that, there we go. And what it's doing, I got start, temp, stop, temp, start, time stamp, time rise delta, elapsed time, elapsed test seconds, and then the result. It's gonna to wanna to see a temperature increase in a certain amount of time. And once it reaches that certain amount of time, then at that point there, it's gonna move on to the next thermocouple. So if I hit back, if I were to hit start, you're gonna see right now the platen's gonna come down to the preheat setting. And right now the current temperature is there. Heater set point, that's what their set point, 392. Max start temp, uh, timer start temp, and timer start top, stop. So again, it's not gonna start testing until it reaches that point. And it's not gonna stop until it reaches this point. Once it gets those two points, A and B, it's gonna give you your timestamp. It's gonna give you your elapsed seconds. If it falls in within that time frame, fast. However, I'm gonna cancel test, push back, and then we can go ahead and press the home button or back one more, and we're back into, into uh, my diagnostics go all the way back down, and of course, language character map, if I were to press that, it just tells you what the languages may be. We're not changing that. We're gonna go back at this point. That takes care of everything under diagnostics. Press the home button. Platen's now moving. Because again, it was down. When you go back to the home screen or the off screen, the platen wants to be up. Just like if you uncrate this unit from a brand new install, and you go to plug it in, make sure there's nothing on the platens, make sure the tie strap or the cable tie on the conduit is cut so you're not raising the platen with the conduit strapped to the arm, okay? Because it will go up and it will damage the conduit. Garland, a well-built company, thanks you for taking this training.